Scorpion is one of the faces of the Mortal Kombat franchise, if not the face of the franchise itself. Scorpion is incredibly popular, likely scoring as one of the most popular characters of the franchise, easily within the top three. What makes this character popular is basically, well, everything. His design is simple and yet iconic, his personality is easy to understand, and his moveset is sufficiently differentiated from basically any other fighting game character, while being simple enough and generally accessible to newcomers within the realm of Mortal Kombat. An essential part of Scorpion's moveset is his trademark spear, among the other weapons at his employ when he is seeking vengeance or a general beatdown against his opponent. Let's explore more about the spear in this video. The harpoon-like spear that we know Scorpion for is called the kunai. Those familiar with ninjas may already visualize a kunai as a throwing blade, but such is the name of Scorpion's spear. It has been an integral part of Scorpion's moves since his debut and recurs in every game. The kunai is most readily associated with Scorpion's thrown harpoon special move, wherein he tosses the kunai towards the opponent, accompanied by his trademark phrase, GET OVER HERE! once it connects before pulling the opponent in. The sprite animations of the early Mortal Kombat games would suggest that Scorpion calls forth the spear from his arm in a manner similar to how Spider-Man is often depicted tossing web shots at his opponent. However, it's actually the case in-universe that Scorpion throws the kunai by hand. Initially, the spear is shown to be thrown using a rope to toss the bladed edge at the opponent, but it's since been replaced with a metal chain. Once the opponent has been reeled in, Scorpion is often left with an opportunity to follow up as the opponent is placed in a state of stun, the duration of which varies depending on the game. Let's take a look next at the spear as it has evolved throughout the games. In the first Mortal Kombat game, we can easily see that a rope is a part of the spear special move. The kunai travels at a serviceable speed, and Scorpion remains frozen in the throwing animation as the kunai is thrown out. If the kunai connects, Scorpion reels the opponent in for a follow-up attack of the player's choice. In Mortal Kombat 2, Scorpion receives a new kunai throwing animation altogether, and the rope that follows the kunai looks much different compared to the rope that we saw in the first game. This is a special kunai animation, because it appears as if Scorpion summons a snake-like harpoon from behind himself. When the kunai connects with the opponent, Scorpion grips the rope with both hands, which is a nice addition. Scorpion doesn't figure as part of the base roster for Mortal Kombat 3, but does appear in Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3 and Mortal Kombat Trilogy. In these games, the spear and its rope spawn at Scorpion's sprite rather than from behind him, and Scorpion's throwing and reeling in animations are similar to what they were in Mortal Kombat 2. Mortal Kombat 4 would be an important game for all characters as it marked the franchise's transition to using 3D models for the characters. Additionally, the wavy and snake-like form of the rope following the kunai is intact. While it's always obvious to the player that they are using the special move, making some question the design decision of making the Blades' follow-up material so ostentatious, it may not always be as easy for the opponent to see or react to, especially in dark stages. Mortal Kombat Deadly Alliance revamps the spear special move with newer animations. When Scorpion reels the opponent in, he doesn't place both of his hands right near each other. Instead, he separates both of his arms by having one arm follow the other, placing the second arm behind himself as he pulls the opponent towards him. It's actually a design decision that makes much more sense than Scorpion's reeling animation from the previous games, and in real life would probably allow him to follow up faster. In this game, it's highly noticeable that the rope following the kunai is in 3D. The wavy and snake-like animation of the throne rope is retained, but is less prominent than in previous games. Weirdly, it's still as if Scorpion throws the kunai forward by bending his throwing hand to the side, which wouldn't make for an effective throw. But if the reality of taking the kunai out to throw at the opponent was incorporated into the animation itself, the special move would take so long to be active and so easily telegraphed that it would be basically useless. Mortal Kombat Deception basically follows Deadly Alliance's animations. Once again, Scorpion looks as if he's summoning the spear from his throwing hand as Spider-Man shoots webs, but otherwise his reeling back animation is the same again. In Mortal Kombat Armageddon, his attack animations for the kunai are the same, but the kunai itself is much more prominent than it has ever been. The blade is significantly larger and shiny. In Scorpion's transition to the Netherrealm continuity, we see new dimensions to the attack in Mortal Kombat 2011. 
First of all, the rope that follows the kunai blade is now clearly replaced with a metal chain. His throwing animation is totally different. It can only be described as striking an extravagant pose, one that would seem to propel the blade forward from one hand while adding force from his body's upper half. It's a completely new look for the attack, and it's definitely interesting. Mortal Kombat 10 adds fluidity to the animation of his throwing out the kunai. Once again, the metal chain following the blade is clearly visible, but the reeling animation smoothly follows Scorpion once he yanks the chain. Speaking of which, you can also see that there's a new reeling animation altogether. Scorpion's throwing and gripping arm stabilize his grasp on the opponent, while he uses his previously free arm to yank the metal chain backwards, starting by pulling the chain in a direction that is both towards Scorpion and downwards towards the ground. What's cool is that Scorpion also has a follow-up attack in which he can cast the metal chain forward, with the chain burning as it makes its way to the opponent and while the kunai is lodged in them. The functionality of the kunai was significantly increased in that game. In Mortal Kombat 11, Scorpion uses his throwing arm as the same arm to begin his reeling animation, which is a marked change from the previous games. While the kunai doesn't factor into all of his fatalities, we see that it does sometimes play a role. In Mortal Kombat 2, Scorpion uses a kunai to slice an opponent in one of his fatalities, but it's not the same as the thrown spear that we're used to seeing. The thrown spear does make an appearance in one of Scorpion's Deadly Alliance fatalities as he lodges the kunai into his opponent's head and gives the rope a couple of pulls before finally yanking the opponent's head off. It's preceded by a cool and extravagant pose. Scorpion has a fatality that incorporates a thrown spear in Deception as well. This time, he throws a spear into an opponent's arm and yanks it off, and then throws the spear again into the opponent's leg section under their knee and on the same side of the dislodged arm and yanks that off as well. Then he twists the opponent's neck and they collapse. When Scorpion's kunai spear appears in the Netherrealm continuity titles, we see Netherrealm Studios' creative attempts at making the fatalities more cinematic pay off with interesting results. In Mortal Kombat 2011, Scorpion has a fatality in which he stabs the opponent's throat, wraps the following chain around their neck, grips the chain, and then kicks the opponent into a portal that he summons in front of him, with another portal appearing above him, showing the opponent dead and hanging. And by dead, we mean the opponent's skin has been completely roasted. In Mortal Kombat 10, Scorpion has a fatality wherein he lodges the kunai into the opponent's head, yanks it out of their body with such force and in a direction that the dislodged head is aimed at the wall behind him and throws one of his swords at the wall, with such timing that it pierces the wall with the head between that wall and the sword's gripping end after the head bounces off of the wall. Scorpion does all of this with a strange sort of grace that has to be seen to be understood. It's not brutal or edgy as you might expect from Mortal Kombat. Both of Scorpion's Mortal Kombat 11 fatalities incorporate his spear. One fatality sees him drive towards his opponent's torso engulfed in flames and burn a hole through them. With his opponent still standing and shocked at the damage done to their body, Scorpion then cuts off their head with one of his swords, kicks it away from him towards the sky and closes the fatality by lodging his kunai towards the head as it's flying away. The head's eyes open as the kunai bursts through the opponent's mouth. Scorpion's other fatality is arguably the cooler of the two, though simpler. He may be a hero by the time of Mortal Kombat 11, but he is still friendly with Hellfire and Portals to Hell. The fatality starts with Scorpion throwing his kunai to the opponent, the blade and chain glowing with intense heat. Once the blade connects with the opponent's stomach, he makes a great leap above and behind the opponent, landing at a space between his victim that is roughly equivalent in distance to the space between Scorpion's opponent and his starting position upon jumping. But Scorpion doesn't land on the ground. He dives into hell and swings under the floor, carrying his momentum from the jump as he appears on the other side of his opponent, as he finally appears in the arena flying into the air. All throughout this time, Scorpion has maintained his grip on the opponent with his chain, and the heated metal chain has also retained its grip. The fatality closes with one yank that cleaves the opponent into two. And that concludes our video on Scorpion's spear and how it has been an important part of the character. We can see that since the character's debut, the utility of the spear and its importance to the character have greatly evolved. It owes to the iconic status of the character that the get over here line is seen not as ridiculous, but as an important part of fighting game history and gaming history in general. 
It's basically impossible to imagine Scorpion without his kunai spear, and it's one of those things that make you question whether or not it's possible to have a Mortal Kombat game without Scorpion himself. Though, let's ignore the first iteration of Mortal Kombat 3, shall we? In my mind, the answer to such a question is very obviously no. What is your favorite version of the Throne Spear special move? Which of Scorpion's fatalities incorporating the spear do you like the best? And as always, thanks for watching. And that about does it for this video. If you enjoyed what you watched and want to see more from Gaming Bolt, you can always hit that subscribe button and turn on the bell icon next to it. That way you will never miss any of our videos.